Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Moss Jackson. Uh, welcome back to Mondays with Moss. Uh, we're in the springtime. Spring has come. And today looks gorgeous. It's sunny as I look out. See some trees, people walking. <clears throat> anyway, it's good to be with you. After spending a week down at the beach. And um, today, I'm going to be talking about something that all of us experience, everybody on the planet. It's called triggers. We get triggered and then stuff happens. We have reactions to it. So this is based upon um, this notion <coughs> of 52 things you need to know, one week at a time. So each week I'm going to present a key theme, topic, or issue that you might want to spend time being thoughtful about, just to see if you can wrap your arms or hands around it and get some control over it, okay? So today is triggers. It's based upon my book, 52 Things Partners Need to Know, okay? And I want to start with a quote by Kurt Vonnegut. Laughter and tears are both responses to frustration and exhaustion. I myself prefer to laugh since there's less cleaning up to do afterwards. So the point is, we do get triggered. Sometimes upsets roll off your back, and sometimes they don't. Have you ever noticed that? Sometimes you go through the day impervious, like Teflon. Things just bounce off you. Then there are days you feel you've been sprayed with Velcro. Everything, frustrations, people, events, bother you. You take everything personally. So Teflon disappears, and the slings and arrows of everyday life hit your heart. Hard. In short, you got triggered. So getting triggered isn't just, Peter, good to see you, buddy. Getting triggered isn't just simply getting annoyed about something or somebody. For example, all of us get cut off when we're driving in a car, get a little annoyed, have a flat tire. Uh, often on my car, I'll go out in the garage if, if I haven't driven it for a while, and the gauge says air tap pressure low. So that, that's an annoyance. But I drive up to the garage, put some air in it. It doesn't trigger a big emotional reaction. My conscious mind just says, take care of it. It's no big deal. Um, also, I wanted orange juice this morning. No orange juice in the refrigerator. Did I get triggered? No, it's just okay. Either my wife or I, when I go shopping today, we'll get some orange juice. I'll have it tomorrow. No big trigger. Just um, concern. Uh, woke up a desire. I went and did it. Got it. No, well, I'm talking about getting triggered. It's about experiencing an intense emo an emotional reaction. These powerful emotional reactions are usually connected to something that happened when you're much younger, such as feeling neglected, devalued, betrayed, abandoned, or endangered. I was watching um, a documentary about Aud Audrey Hepburn, gorgeous actress, wonderful, very popular, became ambassador to UNICEF, uh, but because of some early childhood experiences, she never quite felt secure. She always felt uh, endangered to some degree. So I found that, I mean, that's so true, okay? So these deep feelings can lie within a person for decades and suddenly go pop based upon an ordinary conversation with somebody. It doesn't matter if your partner, friend, mate, business consultant meant to trigger you or give you a reaction. You're just going to have an automatic reaction. And when you get triggered, you feel like you had an attack. This emotional pain can be overwhelming. And unless you're aware of it and learn to manage these pains, you can become emotionally flooded with physically agitation, higher blood pressure, heart agitation, cortisol in your body. Hey, Thomas, in your body, uh, um, adrenaline. In, in other words, you slip into a survival fight-or-flight reaction. Uh, all because you took someone's comments personally. I'll, I'll give you an example. About a year ago, right before COVID hit, early December, my partner and his wife, my wife and I, uh, flew on a great trip to Indo Indochina. And we met a wonderful couple, Larry and Annie, who now live in um, uh, Florida, near Sarasota, I think. And they were delightful. And I love my partner and his wife. I love my wife. But I, found, I found myself getting triggered. After about the second or third day, I felt this uncomfortable feeling. I couldn't put my finger on it. I had trouble sleeping one night. Then all of a sudden, I woke up. I said, I think I know what it is. So I decided to share it with them. And often my partner would say, but I thought I would talk about it anyway. 
just to get it out of my system because I knew it was lodged in my body someplace based upon an old childhood experience. So what happened, what it was basically was we really liked Larry and Annie and um, having a great time with them. And I, I thought to myself, this is, I'm almost embarrassed even to tell you this. What if they liked Bruce and Carol more than they liked Judy and me? Oh God, I can't believe I'm even saying it. So that, that's what was there. It was like um, social fear of social disapproval, not fitting in. And then I said to myself, when else have I felt this in my life? I went back to teenagehood. I went back to a time as a young adult. I went back to when I was 10, moving out of Brooklyn into Richfield, New Jersey. Uh, I went back to when I was six or seven, walking down to the street when I was in Brooklyn, trying to get into a stickball game. The sides were already drawn up, but I wasn't included. So I think the trigger was a fear, uh, an a, a upset over disconnection. So I think we human beings have three basic psychological needs, to feel connected or approved of, feel safe, and to feel some sense of control. This was a feeling of not feeling connected, maybe not included, maybe not good enough. Not based upon performance, just based upon being included. Anyway, as soon as I got it out, they all looked at me like, are you serious? They didn't say it, but I, I had that look, you know? And I just thought to myself, it's okay, because I said it, it's out of my unconscious, I made it conscious, it was done. And we were great for the, the next two weeks. It was absolutely fine. So anyway, triggers happen. And when you get triggered, you want to pay attention to what's going on and what does this remind me of? What's the deep pain? So here's the bottom line, things to do in terms of coping with it one week at a time. Okay, this week is about handling your triggers. First of all, a trigger is a powerful action that unleashes an emotional overreaction. My reaction on that trip was an overreaction. It was... It didn't make sense, but I felt it anyway. This overreaction involves deep emotional wounds that occurred long, long before whatever is going on now happens. So you may want to ask yourself, yeah, I'm upset, but where is this pain really coming from? So for example, if you regularly overreact to criticism or take things personally, ask yourself, where in your past might you first have learned how to do that? Recognize that you got triggered, into an old, primitive, and now useless reaction pattern. Your person dealing with this is not the problem. Your reaction pattern is the problem. The point is, don't blame the person in the present. Don't even pain, blame the person in the past. Stuff happens. But recognize that your old experiences with disapproval, not feeling connected, not having control, not feeling safe, uh, make you overly sen sensitive to present upsets. So you really can't avoid it. You're going to have a reaction. Hopefully you can use one of the key formulas for 52 things you need to know is be aware, pay attention to what's going on. So don't punish your partner for something that somebody did years or decades ago. Take some slow, deep breaths. Stay in the present moment. Ask yourself, am I really being rejected or am I really in danger now? Or is it just an overreaction to something happened a long time ago? I was recently talking to a college student I'm working with who has a strong, strong reaction to unfairness. And he has a really good friend he cares about. And somebody was doing some cyber bullying. And he called me up screaming, I, got, I want to kill that person. I want to go in and yell at that person. So I said to him, well, why do you want to do that? Well, because he's being unfair. I can't let him get away with it. He has to realize he's being really cruel to my friend. So I said to him, do you really think yelling and screaming is going to make him more aware and more sensitive? I mean, perhaps don't you think if you're screaming and yelling, he's going to get angry at you and maybe do some cyber, cyber bullying about you? Then I said to him, take a deep breath. Okay, kind of locate where you are, you know, sitting where you are, look around the room, which is going getting grounded. I said, can you remember a time earlier when you felt cyberbullied or you felt picked on unfairly? And I said, oh my God, I forgot we had talked about that. Yeah, that time when I was in, in junior high school, middle school. So once he got that, I said to him, so don't react in the present to something that happened to you in eighth grade. Sleep on it, sleep on it. Remember that song by Meatloaf, Let Me Sleep On It? 
um, on Bad Side of Hell. Anyway, I said sleep on it. Tomorrow, let's chat and figure out a strategy. If you really want to talk to that, that, pull, that cyber bully, we can figure out something to say. But when you're angry, shut your mouth. You got triggered, let the trigger slow down, calm down your body, and we'll figure it out tomorrow. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, hope you got something from this brief talk on triggers. Normal, normal events, everyday events that trigger major upsets in our body. We often don't know what it is. And you can't figure it out consciously if you overreact. Just take a breath and say, okay, what am I feeling? Where am I feeling it in my body? You might score it 1 to 10. How intense from 1 is not, well, 1 is kind of very low. 10 is intense. I'm really feeling it. I can feel the changes in my body. I can feel my heart beating. Then ask yourself a really important question. What age is this? What age is this upset? And see if you can trace it back. And when you can trace it back, maybe bring a little compassion to yourself. And thinking to yourself, yeah, that was a hard time for me. And be kind to yourself. In the meantime, be kind to yourself. Someone's going to trigger you. Something's going to happen this week. You're going to get triggered. And be well. Enjoy the springtime. I'll see you next Monday. Bye-bye.